In this video, I'm going to show you how you can go about requesting OPT premium processing for any of your underlying OPT applications, whether that's the pre-completion OPT, the post-completion OPT, or the 24-month STEM OPT extension. And that's starting right now. At the moment, if you're requesting the OPT premium processing, you can do that by either filing a request online, or you can do that filing a request the traditional way, which is by paper. Now, keep in mind that depending on your circumstance, the OPT premium processing service may not be the best bet for you. And if you want to learn more about what circumstances where OPT premium processing makes the most sense, I encourage you to watch a video, which I'm going to link in the description section down below, where I talk about circumstances where OPT premium processing makes sense and other circumstances where it doesn't make sense. So with that out of the way, let's go ahead and discuss how you can file the OPT premium processing service request online. Hey, if you're serious about accelerating your job search, saving yourself hundreds of hours of frustration, you've got to get our exclusive career guide for international students, which you can download at sojourningscholar.com forward slash career dash guide also linked in the description section below. Inside, you're going to get our handpicked list of the best 250 plus US companies across several industries that our team has diligently vetted for their hiring and long-term retention of international students like yourself. So if you're currently looking for OPT positions or you are on the OPT right now, this resource can definitely help you identify the best US companies that will meet your immediate H1B sponsorship needs as your next big opportunity is just one click away. So don't miss out, head over to sirjoninscholar.com com forward slash career dash guide to get our limited offer of 70% off today. And back to the video. You want to go to USCIS website at USCIS.gov and here you can click on sign in to sign into an account. And if you've already created an account with USCIS, you can simply sign in here with your email and password. Or if you don't have an account, then you have to create an account. And all you need to create an account is to use an email address, preferably that's your primary email address. And then you'll have to go through a few steps to confirm that you actually own that email address and also to provide some password security questions. And in my case, since I've already created an account with USCIS, I'm just gonna go ahead and sign in. Your next step will be to enter a secure verification code that USCIS will send to your email account and file every time you try to sign into this account. Once you sign into your account, you'll be asked what you want to do next. In this case, I'm gonna click and file a form online and then we'll have to choose the form we want to file online. In this example, we wanna file the form I-907. And as you can see, here, there is a description that tells you what types of forms you can file the I-907 for. So let's go ahead and click on start form. On this page, you'll be asked to add an existing petition that's eligible for premium processing. And in this example, since I don't have any underlying petitions on my online account that are eligible for premium processing, I won't be able to move forward. However, if you have an underlying petition, let's say you haven't added that to your online account, you can go ahead and click here to add that information to your online account. And right here is where you can add an existing case to your account. So let's say you filed the post-completion OPT, you've got your receipt notice and your receipt number. You can use that receipt number to add your existing case to your online account. So now you've seen how to set up your USCIS online account, and you've also seen how to add an existing OPT case to your online account. Let's go ahead and take a look at what filing the Form I-907 form would look like if you're going to be doing this online. So here's the paper form I-907, which is similar to the experience of filing this application online. The first place you want to start is in part one, where you want to enter your alien registration number. Now, if you have an alien registration number, you can go ahead and enter that here. Normally, when you file your post-completion OPT, you wouldn't receive your alien registration number until your post-completion OPT is approved, which means that if you're gonna be filing the STEM OPT extension, you would already have an alien registration number. And in that case, you would have to enter that number here. And number two, you would enter a USCIS online account number if you've ever received one. Number three will be your full name, starting with your family name first and your given name second. Line number four wouldn't be applicable for someone who's filing the OPT by themselves. And line number five is where you add full details of your mailing address. And if your mailing address is the same as your physical address, then you can take yes. If it's not the same, then you can take no and go ahead and complete line number seven. And in this fictitious example, since the mailing address is the same as the fiscal address, I can skip line number seven. Line number eight is where you choose your reason for requesting premium processing service. In this example, since I'm the applicant filing the application, I'm gonna choose this option. In part two is where you're gonna add information about the request. Here in line number one, you're gonna add the form number, which in our case is the I-765. Number two is where you're going to provide the receipt number, which is only gonna make sense if you've received the receipt number. 
So let's say you're filing the OPT at the same time you're requesting the premium processing service. You may not have a receipt number, and so this will be NA. And line number three is where you add your classification for the Form I-765. If it's a pre-completion OPT, then this will be C3A. If it's a post-completion OPT, this will be C3B. And if it's a STEM OPT extension, this will be C3C. Line number four is going to be your petitioner name. Again, just like we did before, this will be your full name, starting with your family name first and your given name second. Line number five, since you are both the applicant and the beneficiary, this will be your full name as well. Line number six is asking for a point of contact for someone who's filing this as a member of an organization or a company. Since that's not applicable, that will be NA. And line number seven, again, similar to line number six, that's going to be NA since this form has been filed by someone who's both the applicant and the beneficiary. Fishery. Line number eight is going to be your full address as the petitioner or the applicant. So pretty straightforward there. In part three of this form, it's where you're going to enter if someone is helping you interpret the form because you don't understand English, or if someone is helping you prepare the form, see, for example, an immigration attorney. In this example, for line number one, since I can read and understand English, I'm just going to choose option A. And in line number two, since I'm also the person preparing this form, I can skip this line completely. Line number three is where you add your daytime telephone number, or in line number four, you can add your mobile telephone number. And if you have a fax number, you can go ahead and provide that. In line number six, you're going to add your requester's email address. And to conclude part three, you'll add your signature and the date of the signature. In part four, in this example, since I don't have anyone interpreting the form, I can skip part four entirely. Same thing in part five, since I'm the one preparing this form, I can skip the whole section entirely. And finally, we have part six, where if there's any additional information that I have to provide that wasn't able to fit the space that was provided in the rest of the form, you can go ahead and provide that extra information here. Now let's talk about where you're going to be submitting your form if you're going to be filing this by paper. This web page will describe where you're going to be submitting your form I-907 either for the form I-765 filed for OPT or the form I-539 that's filed for change of status to an F1 and M1 or J1 status. Now, if you file the paper from I-907, this is where you're going to be sending your application to. It's going to be to the USCIS Chicago Lockbox Facility. And as you can see, this is applicable if you're filing the pre-completion OPT, the post-completion OPT, or the 24 months demo PT extension. Alongside your paper for my 907 is going to be your filing fee. Now keep in mind that the filing fee for the OPT premium processing is non-refundable and that's in addition to what you're going to be paying for the OPT application. As you can see at the time of this video, the filing fee for the OPT premium processing is going to be $1,500. And you can make this payment by money order, personal check, a cashless check, or you can pay by credit card. Now, another tip to keep in mind is if you're filing the paper for my 907 and you're making a filing fee payment, you would have to separate the payment for the OPT application from the payment for the premium processing fee. If you make the mistake of paying those filing fees together, USCIS could reject your application. 